Welcome to this Design Builder webinar on modelling advanced HVAC systems. I'm Dave Cocking and the main presenter today will be Nishesh Jain. After this short introduction, Nishesh will introduce you to advanced HVAC system modelling in Design Builder's Energy Plus detailed HVAC interface. This presentation is focused on more advanced modeling techniques. It builds on our free HVAC tutorials and our earlier modeling HVAC systems from concept through detailed design webinar. If you're joining us for the first time, you can find short introductions to the software and its capabilities in those resources. If you aren't, familiar with Energy Plus detailed HVAC modelling in Design Builder, you may have difficulty following this presentation. If so, don't worry. You can still access the free tutorials and previous webinars on our website, and you'll be able to revisit the recording of this more advanced webinar after reviewing those. Nishesh will show you where to access these other resources along with other uh, helpful content at the end of this presentation. For the more experienced HVAC modelers viewing, you're in for a real treat. Nishesh will be showing you HVAC modelling techniques that get progressively more advanced as he goes through his presentation. The three sections he covers will each focus on different applications. Note that, as always, Nishesh is doing all this live. It's not pre-recorded. There are, there are simulation tools available that enable you to model buildings and HVAC systems in detail. And there are other tools that enable you to model buildings and HVAC systems quickly. But they are separate tools. This is where Design Builder really stands apart from the other available tools. The ability to model buildings with detailed HVAC and other systems more easily, quickly and productively. I think you're really going to enjoy this presentation. So without further ado, I'll now hand over to Nishesh. Yep. Um, thanks, Dave, uh, for this. So just as a reminder um, here that there are two ways to model HVAC systems in Design Builder. Uh, simple and detailed HVAC. Simple HVAC uses Energy Plus Ideal Loads Mechanism and is suitable for early design stages, whereas detailed HVAC is based on Energy Plus Full Systems Modeling and uses a graphical interface to model HVAC systems component by component. Today, we will be focusing on advanced aspects of detailed HVAC modeling. We will first start with detailed HVAC modeling using predefined templates. Then we will move to develop more advanced systems using different components, such as heat exchangers. We will also look at how scripting tools can be used to provide advanced controls. In the end, I will be pointing you towards additional learning resources for design builder in general and also for detailed HVAC specifically. So we'll be using this uh, simple office uh, building model, which is the design builder video tutorial example model. And this is the same example model, which is used in our video tutorials and was also used in the previous HVAC webinar. The only modification that I have done here is that I have preloaded some of the temperature schedules and tweaked a construction layer to optimize our time this time around. So to start with detailed HVAC, first I have to enable detailed HVAC from model options. And on the navigation panel now you can see the detailed HVAC icon visible. So the simplest way to start with detailed HVAC modeling is to load an existing HVAC system using the templates and Design Builder has lots of pre-configured detailed HVAC templates here uh, and besides these there are also 
uh, templates for Astra 90.1 systems. These are typically used during lead Astra 90.1 baseline modeling. Um, and Design Builder has an automated way to model lead Astra 90.1 uh, baseline buildings. Uh, and I will be showing some of these learning resources related to that at the end of the webinar. For this part of the webinar, um, I will be starting with this uh, VAV reheat air cool chiller template and add it to all the zones. So this system has four components, air loop, chill water loop, hot water loop, and the zone group, which contains all the zones having the HVAC system. As we are using a template system here, it uses energy plus default settings. So in this part of the webinar, we will try to improve these defaults for a more optimal performance. Hot water loops uh, provide hot water to heating coils in the zone and in the air handling unit. The hot water loop is itself made of two sub loops, the supply side sub loop, which contains all the plant equipment and the demand sub loop for connections to the zone level equipment. Like the hot water loop, uh, we have got the chill water loop as well. Uh, and it also includes a supply and demand side sub loops. Air loop has the air handling unit, currently a variable air volume system. On the air handling units uh, edit dialog, we can change the outdoor air system settings. On the outdoor air system tab, there is an option for adding an economizer, such as fixed dry bulb, differential dry bulb, or enthalpy based. Economizers are controllers which can provide enhanced fresh air directly from outside. If that air is cool enough, thereby providing free cooling. Program help covers these components in detail and uh, all the settings. You can access program help by clicking on the help button over here for getting help on this specific dialog, or you can use the help menu item uh, on the toolbar for accessing the overall program help. For now, we will not have economizer in our model, but uh, we can include demand control ventilation. In demand control ventilation, uh, we can use outdoor air method uh, based on indoor air quality procedure defined as per ASHRAE standard 62. It will calculate the amount of outdoor air necessary to maintain uh, specific indoor CO2 levels in the zones. The CO2 set point is defined in the activity tab, which I will show you later. Now, because we have a demand control ventilation system, the minimum outdoor airflow rate uh, needs to be zero and we can also enable heat recovery to make the system more efficient. Next, we need to change the set point manager to supply air properly. So I will change the set point manager uh, type from scheduled to warmest and have the minimum and maximum set points to be 14 and 18. This is a more optimal way to control the system instead of using a 14 degree constant temperature. Um, so with this warmest option, the set point is set according to the cooling demand of the warmest zone. So when there is no cooling demand, the set point is 18 degrees. And when cooling is needed, it actuates between 14 and 18 and sets it to the highest level at which the cooling demand could be met. I would like to point out here that I'm using design builder in SI units mode. If you uh, use IP units, then you can easily switch between SI and IP units uh, in the model from uh, tools and program options uh, setting here, which you will have find in, in the toolbar menu. Uh, you can look at program help for more detail on how to do that. On the air loop edit dialog, uh, 
we have all the sizing details for the air loop such as type of load to size on uh, in this case it is sensible load because this is an all air system and we must meet the entire heating cooling and ventilation needs of the building um, also uh, in line with our set point manager settings we need to also correct the co uh, coil sizing temperatures so design supplier temperature for heating needs to be 18 and for cooling which would be 14 degrees the last part of the detailed hvac uh, system is the zone groups so all the zones served by the same hvac system are connected and combined into one group and adding components to one zone adds them to every zone in the group and like with other loops at the top zone level we have got the uh, sizing parameters which are defined such as um, heating and cooling uh, sizing factors for the zones you can also make changes here and i will enable this co2 and contaminant control option um, this is to ensure that our demand control ventilation works properly and i have to go i'll go to the target tab and apply this setting to all the zones we have in the zone group last thing to change in the zone group is the air distribution unit so i'll edit the unit and again i need to turn on this control on outdoor air flow setting this option will ensure that the terminal unit can actually increase the air flow to meet the outdoor air requirement and then we have to go to the target tab and apply this setting to um, all the air distribution units in this group now i'll briefly review uh, the key uh, model data tabs before running the simulation on the activity tab uh, amongst the environmental control options we have the option for co2 set point over here uh, this will be our demand control ventilation set point and uh, is the system will keep the indoor co2 levels to be at 900 ppm um, as per this and on the construction tab, the default infiltration levels are quite high from 0.7 so i'll change it to 0. 1 air changes per hour so these are all the changes that i need uh, to do so i can then um, basically go to my simulation screen and run the simulation so i'll be running the simulation for winter design week from 1st december to 7th december um, select the hourly results to look at on the option setting increase the time steps per hour to six and on the outputs tab besides the standard internal gains energy environmental outputs i will uh, select the detailed hvac specific outputs as well for hvac system temperatures and uh, mass flow rates for each of the nodes there are other uh, specific reports also which you can generate uh, from uh, the simulation um, these were covered in our last webinar, uh, last HVAC webinar. So, along with other relevant calculation options here. So, you can um, uh, see more about these in there, or you can uh, read about it more in the program help by accessing the help from this uh, button here. I will press OK to start the simulation and uh, wait for it to complete. Now the simulation done is complete and I can open the hourly results. Um, and one thing I can see um, here is that on the system's load graph over here, um, the heat recovery is working. You can see the yellow line. However, there is also significant cooling demand and chiller being used, um, which is most likely due to the um, very high internal gains we have got from our lighting and equipment and uh, we can see in the heat balance that is quite high um, so one one more way of optimizing the 
model. Um, however, we can see more system specific results in results viewer. So I'll open results viewer here. And these are the results for this run. And um, first, let's look at our demand control ventilation. So if it's working properly. I'll select all the zones and plot their zone air CO2 concentrations. And the levels of CO2 are maintained around 900 ppm. So that means uh, that our demand control is working properly because that was our set point. Now um, let's look at some of the air loop um, results for node temperatures. So I can sort the results by area, find the air loop section, which is here. And So let, let me plot air loop supply side outlet temperature first. So supply side outlet is this one. This is the air that is coming out from the air handling unit uh, and which is at 18 degrees. And this was our set point we set in the set point manager that when there is no cooling demand, the set point needs to be 18. Um, then I can also plot um, AHU inlet temperature. So AHU um, outdoor air inlet. So this is effectively what the outside air temperature is. And I can plot the mixed air outlet temperature, which is that air that comes after the heat exchanger has mixed the air. And just to for sanity check also add one of the zone um, indoor air uh, mean air temperature. So let's see mean air temperature here. So what we can see here is that the mixed air, which is in green, is often higher than the required 18 degrees Celsius for the outlet temperature. This would mean that the cooling coil is becoming active to cool the air back down to 18 degrees. This is an inefficient operation, especially if the outside air is already cool. So we can optimize this control further by adding an economizer which can provide free cooling or we can modify controls to avoid cooling in the AHU and then uh, reheating that of that air when it goes into the zone. So we can make those changes and improve this. So typically you would run a summer design week calculation as well to check the system performance and then eventually run a full annual simulation. However, in interest of time, I will move on to the second part of this webinar uh, here. So in the second part of the webinar, I will be modifying the system configuration using additional components such as fluid to fluid heat exchanger, I will tell you first about the heat exchanger component itself, then look at some of its example applications, and finally model one of its application in our example model. So this uh, fluid to fluid heat exchanger component is one of the most versatile components and can be configured for use in a situation where any two loops need to be connected. Heat exchangers can also be treated as energy plus simulation artifact where uh, in physical systems, the loop connections might happen directly or via walls. Um, however, in those connections that are not connectable in energy plus, then heat exchanger provides a way to connect those loops and transfer heat between them. This is the heat exchanger example application where air source heat pump is coupled with supplementary heating from the boiler using a heat exchanger. In this example, heat exchanger is used to have an option to bypass the chiller to directly use condenser loop as a water side economizer. In this example, heat exchanger is used with water cool VRFs with heat recovery for domestic hot water. 
and in this example heat exchanger is being used to supply hot water at different temperatures from the same boiler we will be replicating this type of heat exchanger application in this session so in this uh, part of the session we would be um, adding a radiant system in our zones uh, over here and uh, that radiant system would provide the heating and cooling required in the zone and in that case our uh, VAV system uh, in the air loop will become more like a dedicated outdoor air system mainly to provide fresh air as uh, the radiant system tubes run at more moderate temperatures than the air handling unit coils we will be using heat exchangers to supply the higher chill water and lower temperature hot water to these to the radiant system using the same primary equipment so the first step of the process is to add radiant pipes to the zones so i'll go to the zone group and add this radiant surface object this radiant surface object has both heating and cooling pipes in one component i'll change the number of circuits to calculate from circuit length as this is the recommended setting the other option is just for backward compatibility with earlier design builder models the default length here is 106.7 meters which is a which is 350 feet and that is the maximum length for the circuit that is allowed in title 24 and then uh, we can go to the target tab and apply this uh, setting to all the radiant surfaces next step is to change the air distribution unit <coughs> itself uh, i need to remove this uh, reheat uh, unit with a vav unit without a reheat option and uh, because we are modeling a dedicated fresh air system now i need to um, enable this include doas system checkbox and this will enable correct calculation for heat gains and loss by the doas system and go to the target tab and apply these settings to all the zones now i will have to i'll go to the air loop and modify the air loop configuration so let me go to the air loop edit dialog and change the load type to size on from sensible to ventilation requirement as this air handling unit will now only precondition the fresh air also i will change the design supply air temperature for heating to be 22 degrees and for cooling to be 18 degrees this is because we don't want the ventilation air to be too warm or too cold i also have to modify the set point manager and i will change the set point manager type to outdoor air reset this will control the temperature uh, of the um, of the hu um, air based on outdoor air temperature the set point i will use would be 22 degrees when the air outside is cold uh, zero degrees and i will use the set point of 18 when the outside air is 15 degrees or higher same as we had in the loop uh, settings loop sizing setting okay so i will connect the air loop with the zone group now using the auto connect shortcut so i'll select the loop and the zone group and then just click on the connect component uh, button to connect them so this finishes the editing of the ventilation system now we need to supply the low temperature hot water 
and high temperature chilled water to our radiant surface. We will be using a heat exchanger component to create separate temperature loops for both sides of the radiant surface. First, starting with the uh, heating side. So I will start with a generic hot water loop. I and then go to the loop and remove the boiler. Replace it with a heat exchanger. I will then edit the heat exchanger and change the control type to heating set point modulated. This uh, type is required when the heat exchanger needs to meet the heating set points. I will also change the end use type metering to loop to loop. And although this heat exchanger consumes no energy that needs to be metered, uh, there is a need to, uh, this is needed to basically correct uh, the accounting in the summary reports for the heat transfer meters. I'll also enable the sizing factor uh, to avoid any risk of undersizing. For purposes of this webinar, I will set it to high value of 10 here. And okay, I will connect the supply side now. And this type of heat exchanger requires a separate set point manager on the supply side outlet of the heat exchanger. So I will add this set point manager and edit this set point manager and change its temperature to uh, 40 degrees. This is one of the schedules I created beforehand in the model. Um, so, and Basically, 40 degrees is a typical temperature used for radiant heating. So that's what I'm trying to get here. And press OK. Um, I'll select the same set point manager for this set point uh, manager as well, same set point, which is after the supply mixer. So just run it here. Now going to the loop edit dialog. I will first uh, rename the loop as low temperature hot water loop and change the design loop exit temperature to be 40 and delta of eight. So the radiant system will now operate between 40 degrees Celsius and 32 degrees Celsius temperatures. Okay, and then I will finally join the connections. So go to the demand side. Put here and then connect it to the zone. I have to repeat the same process for the chill water side now. So let's start with adding a generic chill water loop. Go to the chiller, remove that and replace it with a heat exchanger. Again, edit the heat exchanger, change its control type now to cooling set point modulated. Um, what this will do is now uh, the heat exchanger will meet the cooling set points for this one. And similar to the heating loop, uh, heating side, change the end use metering and the sizing factor. Like on the other side, uh, this type of heat exchanger also requires a set point manager on the supply side. So I will first connect the components. 
and then add a set point manager on this side. This time um, I will change its temperature to 16 degrees, which is a typical radiant uh, cooling system temperature used and have the same set point for this set point manager as well. And then go to the loop edit dialog, change its name to high temperature chill water and have the loop design exit temperature as 16 degrees with the delta of 4. Okay. Then finally join the connections. So complete the last one so uh, this completes the system configuration and now i can run the simulation but before that one second i need to uh, define the correct location for my uh, constructions so uh, correct location of the radiant system in the constructions and radiant surface can go on any construction in this case, we want them in the ground floor uh, here or in the internal floor for the uh, level one. So I will edit the ground floor construction. On the internal source tab here, this is where we specify the location of the radiant surface. And in the image, I can see that the radiant, uh, radiant surface, the internal source is uh, located here. Ideally, it should be between the um, screed and the insulation layer. So I'll go to insulation here, change the location, and this is now the correct one. And similarly for the internal floor, currently it is right now between the lower concrete and the insulation, it needs to go up. So I can change this. Now it is in the correct place. Okay, and now I can run the simulation. So I will run the simulation again for the same settings for the winter design week and see how it works. Now in the, uh, we have the results and in the building level um, hourly results, we can see that radiant uh, heating is happening in our model. And we can use a uh, results viewer to look at the uh, low temperature hot water system uh, if it is working correctly. So let's go to the section here, you can sort by area and find my low temperature hot water section it should be here. So these are all the low temperature hot water side details. I will open low temperature hot water supply side outlet. So supply side outlet temperature. Um, and we can see here that uh, our supply reaches the 40 degrees, which was our set point for the radiant system um, to supply uh, heat that is working correctly. There are some dips, but I can open the mass flow rate and add that and we can see that the dips are actually instances when the heat exchanger is off so yeah it's working um, properly right now there is one more result i can show you here which is um, on data visualization 
and I will run the simulation again. So we are enabling a uh, surface level outputs and basically we will see the temperatures on the building geometry using false color visualization. So this is the external surface incident solar radiation output. You can go to the internal surface, change the results from run period averages to hourly, and create a section, make it for one of the working days in the model. And now you can see the surface temperature results. So and I can see it's 26, 21 degrees, 21, around 21 degrees uh, is nicely being maintained on the floors. Um, and so radiant system is working nicely. So that's it for uh, this part of the presentation. And now I will move to part three of the presentation. So while the standard uh, modeling, which I showed right now, will allow you to model your systems with lots of flexibility, especially when using heat exchangers. In this part, I'll be talking about scripting tools, which is uh, will be taking you to your modeling flexibility to another level. Design Builder has two main scripting options, Energy plus EMS, and the other one is C Sharp and Python. The context of HVAC modeling, um, C Sharp and Python can be used to pre-process and post-process your simulations by adding new energy plus system components that are not yet included in design builder HVAC options. You can modify properties of existing system components in IDF file before the simulation is run. And also you can post-process results, create bespoke reports for your simulation and sizing outputs. EMS, on the other hand, provides custom simulation runtime control to override selected aspects of standard energy plus behavior. EMS use in detailed HVAC can span from a very simple script to control HVAC start time based on outside air temperature, which is shown here, to more complex operation schemes controlling multiple HVAC components using numbers of sensors. In the software, there are many pre-configured scripts and program help has many learning resources and tutorials for these. In this part of the webinar, I will be modeling a system where we will prioritize use of the system depending on the carbon intensity of the grid. To minimize our carbon emissions, we would like to run our system when the carbon intensity of the grid is low. And we can use this water tank as a hot water buffer vessel to store heat and offset some of the, some of the emissions when the grid is at high intensity levels. These are the hourly emission factors for 2019 from UK national grid for Scotland, England and Wales. These numbers are in kilogram of CO2 per kilowatt hour and carbon intensity for England, for example, varies between 0.15 and 0 0.4 uh, with an average of 0 0.2. So what we will try to model is to run the heating system when the carbon intensity is lower than 0 0.2 kilogram of CO2 per kilowatt hour or if there is heating demand in the space and stored heat in the tank is finished. You will notice that in the diagram, I have a boiler as the heating source. Typically, you would have something like a electricity running air source heat pump. However, for this demonstration, I am trying to keep things consistent with our earlier models. 
so i will just be ma making the boiler to be a electric type So back to the model. Uh, first step here is I will reset the system because we have done a lot on this one right now. And reload the previous system template. And this time I will keep it at default settings as the purpose now is to show you the use of scripting tools. I had uh, I previously skipped, but uh, in typical system designing process, you would be undertaking some sort of design sizing calculation to estimate the size of your plant side equipment. So let's do a heating design calculation first. So we can go here, update data and run a heating design calculation. So I can see that uh, the zone sensible heating demand overall is 65 kilowatts and including the um, sizing factor and oversizing we have a plant load requirement of somewhere around 80 kilowatts so i can use this as my uh, boiler size so going to the boiler i can change the nominal capacity to 80 kilowatt I also need to make this boiler electric so i'll change the fuel type to be electricity and have a more realistic efficiency now the efficiency curve is for a gas boiler so i need to make it make this curve uh, with linear efficiency which is more representative of a um, electric boiler so i'll just make it near efficiency and just quickly change the numbers see the curve plot now it's uh, a linear curve and assign this to the model yes. okay so this is done uh, now i will need to add the storage tank system so that will start by adding a auxiliary heating loop over here and this this loop is typically used for um, solar hot water systems but i can modify it and uh, what we need to do is uh, we need to move the tank um, from the side here uh, to the supply side inlet so i will go here where the tempering valve is remove the tempering valve remove the tank just create a bypass over here first and then add the hot water tank again connect it to the system over here so uh, now i can edit the tank properties so i will enable external heating plant connection so that we can connect this uh, tank to the boiler and i will remove the internal heating element because we will have the boiler that will heat up the water in this case and we can see that the set point used is 55 degrees which is typical and okay and i will also set the tank volume uh, to 10 cubic meters typically you will have a fixed tank size in these scenarios to provide load shifting and bigger the tank the more load that can be shifted in this case i am using a reasonably realistic average uh, tank size here so uh, we will complete the supply tank supply side by connecting the components so just do this and add a, a set point manager uh, this set point manager is also uh, by default 55 degrees so we also need to uh, change the connections and uh, 
over here and connect the tank to the boiler and then have the coils connecting to the water tank so first i will go to hot water system demand side and remove these connections and connect tank here and then I will go to the auxiliary roofs demand side and connect these So uh, now the hydronic connections are complete and now we have to focus on the load shifting side and what we want to do is you want to switch off the boiler when the carbon intensity of the grid is high. So I will be doing this by changing the availability schedule of this boiler plant loop using the EMS. So this is the availability schedule which I would like to change. And this is the most critical part of the process as the EMS script needs to find this particular item here and change the schedule. So what I will be doing is I will be creating a unique schedule here to uh, for the EMS script to find and I will duplicate the existing rename it as boiler control. and the name is important it should exactly match what we have in the script and assign it to the uh, loop okay so the next step is to add the ems script and what we have here is a pre-configured short script which i created so i'll just copy this and go to my ems section enable script add a new one call this load set point. load shifting enable it and paste so the first object here is trying to uh, get the carbon intensity the schedule file object this one is trying to get the carbon intensity from our csv files so let me so yeah this is so basically it is trying to get these numbers from here um we have the correct uh, file path uh, which refers to this file path and the file name and uh, looking we are going to look at the num column number three which is the carbon emissions for uh, em intense carbon intensity for the england uh, electricity grid and uh, we're skipping the first row and we have got 8760 number of hours so basically a full year data is there in this file uh, over here the next uh, section is our object uh, for our actuator uh, this one and the unique boiler control schedule is what we are trying to change here the next two objects are our sensors which we are using to control this actuator which is above first sensor is the carbon intensity value uh, this one and which is coming from the csv schedule file and the second is the tank temperature uh, so the ems script is as follows that if uh, grid carbon intensity is less than 0 0.2 
or if water tank temperature goes below 50 degrees celsius then the boiler is on otherwise it remains off the last items are a specific outputs that i am requesting to check if the load shifting is working correctly or not so you can press okay okay and let's run the simulation so i will run the simulation again for the same settings but this time actually turn off the surface outputs uh, so those surface outputs got started uh, when i did the data visualization results uh, so i'm just i turned it off to reduce the size of my simulation result file so now the run is complete and uh, my initial observation is that on the system's load graph we have got heating that is happening uh, regularly constantly um, that is being supplied to the zone however on the fuel graph i can see that the electricity used for heating modulates a lot that means that the boiler is switching on and off um, and we can look at the working of the script better in the results viewer with the additional outputs that i requested so let's look at this one and let me find my first one is schedule value boiler control so this shows the boiler is cycling uh, in and out as we have six time steps per hour the fractional values just represent the average of every 10 minute interval the schedule value uh, grid carbon intensity is uh, also we can see that adding this object there is a cycling on and off of the boiler which is coinciding with the instances when the grid electricity uh, uh, grid electricity carbon intensity is um, exceeding our threshold of 0 0.2 so all these instances that is happening and adding the tank temperature results further so let me see where it is yeah um it is clears things further that uh, when the carbon intensity is lower uh, around these times the tank temperature is getting to uh, its set point of 55 degrees however as the intensity of the grid increases the boiler shuts down only uh, shuts down and only kicks in to maintain 50 degrees tank temperature as per our script so this shifting of load is a good example of customized control of systems and we could have done the same thing on the chiller side as well uh, to make it uh, better for the whole year um, so while uh, this is an instance where we are changing controls based on carbon intensity this could very well be configured to shift load based on cost of energy or uh, based on renewable energy supply availability etc so this finishes the part three of my modeling and let's look at the rest of the resources now so as i mentioned in the beginning uh, that i would like to share some design builder learning resources with you um, and you can learn more about design builder using all of these resources mentioned at the in the bottom you can find uh, so let's look at the resource section so you can find the webinar recordings on our webinars page over here and this covers a wide range of topics uh, the earlier webinar on HVAC which we mentioned in the beginning uh, is this one it is on basics of HVAC modeling in design builder it covers how rapidly you can model energy plus HVAC systems in design builder and quickly and easily update your model as the design evolves we can go to program help as well and uh, this is the encyclopedic program help which has explanation of all design builder settings and data items it has a dedicated section on tutorials and modeling guides this page brings together in one place all the various tutorials and modeling guides that are available in the 
program help um, arranged by separate sections for example if you want to learn more about ashray 90.1 modeling or automated lead mepc report generation there are modeling guides for these available then if i go to the tutorials page um, you can start using design builder as a starter so if you are new to design builder and want to get a feel for the software here are a few short tutorials on basic design builder modeling and various features it might be also nice for as a refresher for existing users to also see some new functionality and features that might have been introduced and i can also go to the on demand training page so if you are looking for a starting point for a structured learning of design builder then our on demand online training provides the answer it has a dedicated modular training section for example for let it go um, for example for detailed hvac section which covers sizing zone groups and modeling vrf systems for example hot water loops chill water loops air loops and also use of radiant systems and heat exchangers so so that's all from me today and if you'd like to keep in touch do subscribe to our newsletter and also do follow us on linkedin where we regularly post content on software news upcoming events and webinars along with tips and tricks thank you